Let's go through another set, all right? Now, um, one thing I want to go through, you guys, is we could do this the way that I, the last method I told you, by adding these equations up and then dividing them, right? So it makes sense. You can add them up to the side, see what they get, get them to one rational expression, and then you can divide them. There's another thing. If we, when you guys were learning equations, one thing we had is let's say I had like 3 fourths x plus 1 over 8 equals 11 twelfths, OK? If you had a problem like this, all right, one of the ways to solve an equation like this is what we call like fraction busting. Just get rid of all of the fractions, right? So what we would do is we'd multiply everything by our least common multiple, our least common denominator, to get rid of the fractions. So if you had an equation like this, right, guys, this is, they, none of them have the common denominators. This would just be a mess trying to do all fraction operations, right? Yes? Would anybody want to do this? No. But what you could do, if I said, all right, the LCM of all my denominators equals 12. So if I multiply all of my denominators by, or every single term by 12, is my equation still equal? As long as I do whatever I do on the left side, I do on the right side, is that good? So since I multiplied both terms by 12 on the left side, I multiply on the right side, my equation is still true, right? OK, but now what happens? That goes to 1. OK, that goes to 3. And this would now you know, simple down to, uh, simplify down to uh, 3 halves. So I don't get totally rid of everything. However, is this a lot easier to go and work with than what the previous problem was? I didn't get rid of all the fractions, sorry. But I, got, I made it simplified, right? So that's the exact same thing. Notice, though, guys, as long as we do it to everything, we keep the equation equal. Well, that can be the same thing when you have a rational expression. As long as you multiply your numerator and your denominator by the same number, you keep what we call equivalent fractions. So what would be my number, or what would be my value that I'd want to multiply the numerator and the denominator by? Well, in an equation, I'm, when I had fractions, I multiplied by the LCM. So do you think I might want to multiply by the LCM for my fraction? Yeah. So let's go ahead and determine what is the LCM then of this expression. So here I have a denominator x minus y. Here I have a denominator x plus y. And here I have a denominator of x minus y. So what do you think the LCM would be for those two? What do you say, Jaden? There you go. So what I'm going to do then, ladies and gentlemen, is I am going to now multiply my numerator times x minus y, x plus y. And I'm going to multiply my denominator by x minus y times x plus y. Does everybody understand that these are going to be equivalent equations? Yes. Everybody agrees with that? No? Okay. Well, Dimitri. I say no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, done. I'm just kidding. So if you had 3 fourths, right? and you multiplied by 2 over 2, you would get 6 eighths. Is 6 eighths the same thing as 3 fourths? Yeah. Of course it is, right? Good job. OK. So now we have to apply. Here I have an expression. So I need to apply distributive property. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when I apply distributive property, the x minus y divides with the x minus y to give us 1. So therefore, I'm only going to be left with 2 times x plus y. When I multiply x minus y times x plus y times this, my x plus y and my x plus y divide to 1. So I'm just left with x minus y. When I multiply my common denominator, or my least common multiple, times this, my x minus y and my x minus y divide to 1. So I'm just left with x plus y. Any questions on that step? Yes, Ashley. You have that great look. OK. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I can't, I can't break this up because I have this addition. So you can't just say, oh, those divide out, because you have addition separating them. So what I want to do is now simplify this to give me 2x plus 2y plus x minus y over x plus y. Then we'll move it this way. And we'll say 2x plus x is 3x. 
2y minus y is going to be um, y all over x plus y. And no, those, ladies and gentlemen, those do not cancel out. So we leave you with a 3. Um, because you'd have to factor out a 3 for them to be able to divide out. So that would be your final answer. OK? Alex, did you have that written down? Do you? OK. Ready to prove it? Because I don't see it written down. OK, yeah, but I'm going to erase that. And you're just spending time because.